Hi, uh, this is our first episode of GitLab Design Talks, specifically focused on collaboration this time. Uh, my name is Nick Post. I'm part of the, the Optimize group, and I'm here with Nadia. And Nadia, can you introduce yourself? Hey, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me here today. Um, I'm the product designer for Verify Pipeline Authoring. Quite recently joined Verify Pipeline Authoring, actually, just a couple of months. I've just gone through a transition. Before that, I was on the monitor team. Uh, well, do I need to provide a bit more personal details, maybe? Well, currently, I'm in beautiful <laughs> Tenerife, Spain, uh, escaping the lockdowns, enjoying some good weather. Generally, I'm quite nomadic, travel a lot. Um, during the, these times, feeling very lucky to get to travel a little bit. Um, and yeah, very excited to talk a little bit more about collaboration today because lately there's been a lot of uh, shifts in how I collaborate with product managers and engineering. Transitioning to a new team is always exciting times when you get to kind of set up new processes and you have to adjust, your new teammates have to adjust. So um, I have some new insights to share. Nice. I'm really excited to hear about that. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll kick off with the first question, and it's it's just sort of more broadly around around uh, joining GitLab. But sort of tell me about your experience of the the culture of collaboration within within GitLab, and and how has it differed from the previous jobs or roles that you've been in? Yeah. So uh, well, collaboration GitLab is quite unique. <laughs> I think a lot of us can say that. Um, for me, uh, transitioning to GitLab has been challenging also because my previous role uh, was working for a UX agency. So working for an agency is quite different uh, from working for a product company. Um, and yeah, if we're talking about collaboration with the engineering teams, for example, really there was very little collaboration. It was very much, um, you know, close collaboration with the project manager, but once that is done, the designs are kind of just thrown over the fence and whatever happens afterwards, you know, it's good if I get to see um, my designs actually implemented and usually it comes with a whole set of surprises. Um, so, I can say that especially collaborating closely with the engineering team, it was definitely something new for me uh, coming to GitLab and took me quite a while to figure it out. But uh, eventually I feel like um, I got there and I see huge benefits to close collaboration with the engineers, especially at GitLab, um, given that the product is so technical and we quite often have to rely on the engineering team to provide us the domain expert knowledge and you know all of the other things that we do the user research and everything but often the engineers are the people that we can go to immediately right away and just ask a question um, about how things work so um, yeah that's that's been definitely the biggest uh, the biggest kind of learning point for me uh, I realized that kind of my success as a designer really depends on my collaboration with the engineering team and product management as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And maybe for for anyone who's uh, who's not part of GitLab, maybe you can sort of illustrate the the way that our teams are set up and how we're organized within within GitLab for a bit of additional context. Yeah, sure. So generally. Um, we have separate product teams that focus on different parts of GitLab. So every product team can be focused, let's say, on uh, GitLab CI uh, solution or uh, continuous delivery or um, monitoring tools. So that would include, for example, metrics dashboard, incident management, things like that. So every separate pro product team will focus on their own area and um, a product team has one or more designers. It depends on the size of the product team. Um, maybe I'm not sure what the ratio is exactly, but I don't know, 10 engineers per designer sounds, sounds about right. And the pro product manager. So as a designer, 
you're working very closely with your product manager to understand um, what the market needs, what are the things that need to be built, uh, what are the problems that we're trying to solve. Um, and then you rely on the engineering team to help you understand what is feasible and what can be built. Uh, so that informs your designs. And the collaboration really, you know, the way we collaborate it really varies from team to team, uh, but the setup is pretty much the same and um, all designers have to collaborate with both PM and engineering, engineering to varying degrees. Cool, so self-autonomous teams of one designer to one PM to six to 10 engineers, all working in a uh, fairly sort of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, autonomous way and, and loosely coordinated with other product and VR or, or feature teams who are working as well. And, and yeah. I think we're really empowered to, uh, to sort of make decisions for ourselves as teams. And that, that really uh, helps to like achieve results and, and, and optimize towards throughput and speed of delivery and, and reduced cycle time overall. So I, I touched on um, results there and results is one of our key values. And one thing that I noticed since joining GitLab is that our other values of like results, efficiency, diversity, inclusion, iteration and transparency, they all have like a tremendous impact on each other, but I think collaboration and how we collaborate especially. Uh, so I was wondering whether um, you have any thoughts on that, whether having how the, the relationship of values has been sort of interesting on how it's impacted uh, uh, collaboration or, or whether there's been any challenges for you as well. Yeah, sure. Well, I would say that collaboration affects all of the other values, right? We have to collaborate to make sure that we are all aligned on those values. And um, it's, I, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm aligned to those values, but also it's my responsibility to notice if as a team, sometimes we're not aligned to some of our values and to make suggestions. And, you know, it's a, it's a continuous, we're all continuously growing. Um, so of course it, collaboration has an impact on results and efficiency and diversity. You know, there are many, we were talking about collaboration, like there are many different things that go into collaboration. Um, as a product designer on my, in my day to day, mostly I collaborate with um, fellow UX designers for my team. Uh, my product manager and the engineers. And um, when it comes to collaborating with uh, fellow UX designers, product designers, uh, the UX team at large, then we're kind of touching upon transparency values, for example. So at this point, we're what, like 60 people, large UX team, something like that, right? Uh, we've grown quite quite a bit. And at this point, it's become very important that we all share the, the work that we're doing uh, transparently across the team. Um, so there's a lot of uh, deliverables that are being produced and new UX research insights and um, you know just a lot of information to consume. So it's very important that we efficiently share the information and uh, foster collaboration across the team. Um, when it comes to collaboration with the product manager and uh, the engineering team, I feel like it really, really strongly ties in with the iteration and results values. So um, in my understanding, iteration, at least to results, at least this is how we kind of uh, look at it at GitLab, that's really uh, pushing, uh, pushing the team to iterate faster, to test different assumptions to conduct more experience and to learn from our experiences quickly, it leads to better results. Um, and also good iteration means better efficiently, efficiency, so really it all ties in together. Um, so figuring out a good way to iterate together, that's been 
a very big challenge. And I know it's something that a lot of our teams struggle with and specifically figuring out how, how does UX influence the iteration process or help lead the iteration process to then impact the results. So that's been just a very interesting process and a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest, like joining, um, joining GitLab, I, it took me several months to just understand like how this all works. And then uh, it took me even more time to work out a good system where um, I was able to start influencing the iteration process. Uh, with my product manager and with the engineers. And now I feel like um, we have a pretty good uh, system that we worked out for how we approach um, working on designs for new features and then defining iterations from the kind of value to the user perspective. So when we think about how we break things down and how we iterate, there are different kind of angles that we can look at it. Um, one angle is the value that we deliver to our So how can we maximize the value that we deliver in the first iteration, right? We call it an MVC, the uh, minimal viable change. So what is the smallest kind of chunk of new improvements that we can provide that will um, provide value and solve uh, users problem like, um, but also at the same time, there's another angle that the engineering team, the engineering managers look at iteration from is how does it make sense to implement it? So what is the most efficient way to implement it? Because there are so many complexities and dependencies in the product and like all the parts of the product uh, that as a product designer, I have no idea about them usually most of the time. So then it's important for me to understand it and then compare it to kind of my perspective. How can we provide maximum value in the first iteration? And then somewhere in between is that sweet spot the, where we, we have to compromise and figure out what, what those iterations, the MVC and the further iterations will look like. Um, yeah, now that I'm on a new team, again, we're, st we're starting to figure out some, some parts of it all over again, but luckily I moved together with my product manager. So together we're working on kind of bringing our um, work process onto the new team. So let's see how that plays out. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you brought up like an excellent point there, how um, we are working in these multidisciplinary teams where the designers are bringing the perspective of the user and the desirability or usability or something like this the engineers are bringing sort of feasibility and the techn technical constraints. And then the, the product manager is there to sort of talk about the business goals and the viability of that. So everyone has their own different piece of the puzzle and it's that intersection of the different disciplines collaborating together and bringing their knowledge of their different domain that, that sort of hits that sweet spot for what the, the minimum viable um, change is. Uh, yeah, so that's really cool. I've heard this term uh, before called creative friction. And like in order to have a, a good creative team that's operating healthily, uh, you need to be aware that there will be some creative friction happening. So uh, we'll inherently as designers communicate in a different way from engineers and from product managers. So this friction is sort of what leads to sometimes a little bit of confusion and sometimes leads to like a little bit of disagreement, but from that friction actually comes a resolution, which tends to be greater than the sum of its parts. So I think collaboration in GitLab, we are allowing this creative friction to occur, but the fact that we're working asynchronously has like quite an interesting impact on that. So I'm wondering whether you can sort of talk a little bit about how working remotely and collaborating asynchronously has uh, has impacted your work and how you collaborate with the team. Yeah, sure. Well, one thing I have to say is that I, I've been working remotely for a very long time and I've never had a proper full-time um, 
location-based job where I had to interact with uh, with my team face to face every day. So I'm a bit I ha I'm a bit um, you know my case is a bit unique uh, maybe even though now of course it's very it's very widespread so maybe not that unique anymore. Um, but yeah, of course, generally, I think uh, the impact that asynchronous communication has is that we put in more effort into how we communicate, right? When you're writing uh, an issue comment, um, usually most people would reread their comment and you, you have more opportunity to become aware of any biases or uh, perhaps you might notice that your response is a bit too emotionally charged and you have to like go back and tone it down. It certainly happens to me oftentimes and I'm very grateful for being able to communicate asynchronously and really put my put my thoughts into the right like form to make sure that it's not misinterpreted, that it's uh, that it's you know it's it's received as intended. However, still of course miscommunication happens, and um, I just think it's very important that we all really try to empathize with the other person, like whoever you're talking to. And I know we talk about a lot, um, and it's it's one of our values. I think kindness is actually part of the collaboration value, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it really is very important because in a remote setting, sometimes things can, uh, you know, it's easy to take something wrong. Like we're all very passionate about our work where we uh, have strong opinions about things. And uh, it's also happened to me in the past where I took some comment personally and it's, it's happened to me where I said something and I really didn't intend to offend anyone, but it happened. So it's normal and we just have to kind of talk through it and you know just like in, in any relationship you just have to communicate and try to understand the other person's side um for collaboration with uh the product manager and the engineering team well specifically with the product manager so coming from an agency background i i had a bit of a different relationship with my project manager so i had to learn exactly what are the goals that my product manager is working towards and what are the things that are important to my product manager what is driving uh his decisions so um I, one of the things that helped me was reading more about it just reading more articles about product management and um a book i read called inspired uh, I don't remember the author of the book, but uh, it's it's one of the top books. If you look up books, Silicon on Valley managers. Group or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so it was it was pretty good at just like laying the foundation for what what product management is, and what are uh, and there's a lot uh, in that book on collaboration specifically. So it really helped me understand the product manager's perspective. Um, for the engineering team, uh, I would say I'm kind of not that I have any problems with communicating with the engineers, but sometimes I do feel like I have some gaps that I do not fully understand. Um, so it would be good to, to learn more about um, how engineering managers work and what are their goals, because I, I would say that that's something that I still need to learn about. So if anyone has any comments or any experiences to share about how to better collaborate with the engineering team, how to better leverage their expertise, please do let me know. Um, at this point, like my, my kind of conversion style with engineers is to involve them in the design process as early as possible because um, they will still have, I mean, they have a lot of leverage like to just uh, veto your designs and be like, hey, that's just not going to work. And it's, it's normal. This is this is how it is. So it's really in my interest to involve them as early as possible to get their input um, to to let me know what is possible, what is feasible, what are the technical constraints. So that informs my designs before I even like push any pixels when I'm still just thinking about things. Um, but I think it would be helpful to have. Um, this deeper understanding of the engineering team's goals 
because I think having that kind of deeper understanding makes you more empathetic and puts things into perspective because when you communicate with someone, if you don't understand where they're coming from in terms of their goals, how they make their day-to-day -day decisions, uh, then it's easy to, to uh, misunderstand where they're coming from. Uh, so yeah, what about you, Nick? Do you, do you have anything to say about that? Well, first of all, I need to say that was, that was, there was so much wisdom in that, in that last uh, comment that you had. I just need to pause and, and reflect on some of the points that you made, just, <laughs> just, just for myself. Uh, so uh, I think you brought up a really great point of, of involving kindness within, within the, the collaboration process. And uh, another way I've heard that talked about is like assuming best intent from the other side. And then you also mentioned that, you know, empathizing with, with the people in your team is really valuable, understanding where, where they're coming from and understanding what they're trying to achieve really helps for you when it comes to communicating and sort of putting, putting yourself in their shoes. That, that's an excellent point as well. And that sort of goes hand in hand with best intent. And then uh, I, I'm just like you. Sometimes someone provides some, some feedback on my work and like my immediate reaction is, oh, how dare you? You're insulting my baby. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> but I think the, the beauty of async is it, it gives you time to press pause, step back, um, diffuse the immediate first reactions and first emotions that you get from that feedback, assume best intent, and then, and then use that to sort of go, go further and, uh, and, and improve the designs overall. So I think, I think async really, really supports that way of working. And then you also talked about invol involving the PM and the engineers sort of early and often within the design process, because that again goes to the efficiency value of, of just making sure that they're incorporating their perspectives of, is it feasible uh, if you're an engineer or is it viable if you're a PM? So yeah, so I think that that's like a lot of great, great stuff. So I, I really appreciate what you said there. Um, so for me, collaboration, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm doing these, these series of design talks. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to, to stay open and, and, and listen to uh, all the great designers on our team and also all, all all the engineers and, and, and PMs as well, ideally I'll speak to and sort of learn for myself if I have a, a, a greater perspective, but I, I really appreciate what you said. I suppose uh, we've only got like a, a minute or two left, so I'll ask you uh, one more question. Uh, what, what advice would you give to uh, a designer or a, a new joiner uh, for GitLab? Ooh, <laughs> well, um... It's challenging, but very rewarding to work at GitLab. Uh, the product is very complex, so get ready to tackle a lot of complexity. Um, don't be scared to dive into the code and um, just playing around with the product itself, because I, I personally find that very empowering. and just take your time. It's gonna take such a long time for you to ramp up and feel like you are not completely clueless. Um, I've been at GitLab for more than one year and now uh, joining a new team, I feel like I had to go through my onboarding all over again. And um, yeah, just kind of remembering that uh, it's all just a one, one big learning experience and you will never know everything that really helps. Um, so yeah, those, I, I think this would be my best advice to someone joining GitLab, but someone considering GitLab, like if you are looking for a job and you're considering joining GitLab, uh, please do consider us because uh, our team is awesome. I can say that I really don't think there is another company that has such an amazing remote culture and such amazing values that we really truly live by every single day. It still blows my mind that uh, we've grown to, to this size and we are actually living by all of those values. So join us. You will not regret it. It's fun. What a, what a beautiful way to, to finish off the conversation. Thank you very much, Nadia. Thanks, Nick. Bye-bye.
Bye.